Okay, this video is on exponential functions, and we're going to start out with an example. In your notes it says, after graduation from college, you're offered a job at a starting salary of $40,000 with annual raises of 6%. So you get a raise of 6% each year, and we'd like to calculate what your salary is going to be for the first few years. So when you first start working there, what we'll call year zero, your salary then, S sub zero, is going to be $40,000. So that's your initial salary. Your salary after you've been working there for a year, we'll call that S sub 1, well that salary is going to be the salary that you're currently making plus 6%, that's your 6% raise. So that salary is going to be 40,000 plus 6% of 40,000, so we'll write that as 40,000 times 0.06, and if we punch that into our calculator, we get 44,944 dollars. If we want to calculate your salary for year two, well, your salary for year two is going to be whatever you're making from year one, 44,944, plus another 6% raise. So, 44,944 plus 6% of 44,944, so that's going to be 44,944 times 6%, or 0.06. And if we punch this into our calculator, we get 47,640 dollars. And we could keep going for year three and year four, but Notice that if we wanted to calculate, for example, your salary after you had been working for this company for, let's say, 10 years, well, if we're going to use this method, we'd have to calculate first, you know, S sub 3, S sub 4, S sub 5, and all the way up until we finally get to year number 10. It'd be nice if we had a formula that we could use and we could just calculate, we could just plug directly into the formula, what's going to be my salary in 10 years. So let's see if we can come up with that formula. So notice up here, when we calculated the salary for year one, $40,000 plus 6% of $40,000. Let's write this as, since $40,000 is S sub zero, that's the starting salary, we're going to write S sub one as S sub one equals our starting salary plus our starting salary times 6%. That's all this line right here says. S sub zero plus S sub zero times 6%. So, this, I actually want to rewrite this. I want to rewrite this in a slightly different form. I want to take this factor S sub zero. I want to take that and I want to kind of pull it out of each term. And then I'm going to rewrite this part as 1 plus 0 0.06. All right. Notice if I use the distributive property here, if I multiply this through my parentheses, I just get what I started out with right here. All right. So what I have is S sub 0 times 1 plus 0 0.06, and if I go ahead and put these two numbers together, if I go ahead and add 1 and 0 0.06, then I get S sub 0 times 1.06. All right. Now, let me come up with a similar kind of expression here for S sub 2, the amount of my salary after two years. Well, just like up here, in order to calculate my uh, salary for year number two, I took my salary for year number one, and then I added 6% times my salary for year number one. Well, let me rewrite this using, instead of the actual numbers 44,944, let me use the value for S1. 44,944 is my salary in year one, so let me just call that S sub one, plus, I need 6% of S sub one, that's my 6% annual raise. And once again, I'm gonna rewrite this expression like I did up here, I'm going to rewrite it as S sub 1 times 1 plus 0.06. All right, notice again I could use the distributive property and multiply that through and I'd get back to this. So I rewrite this using this in this form. And once again, let me combine 1 and 0.06 and I have S sub 1 times 1.06. So I could calculate my second year salary as my first year salary times 1.06. Well, now I want to do one more thing before I leave this value for S sub 2. I would like to replace S sub 1 with this value up here that I calculated for S sub 1. That is, 
I'd like to take this expression here, S sub 0 times 1.06, which I've just shown is equal to S sub 1. I'd like to take this value and substitute it in here for my S sub 1 in this expression. And we're going to see why in just a minute. So I'm going to take this value, I'm going to substitute it here where S sub 1 is, which means now I'm going to have S sub 0 times 1.06, that's this value for S sub 1, times 1.06. All right, and again, we're going to see why I did that in just a minute. So let me leave this for now. I've got S sub 2 equals S sub 0 times 1.06 times 1.06. Let's write an expression for S sub 3. Well, S sub 3, my salary in year number 3, is going to be my salary from year number 2 plus 6% of my salary from year 2, just like all these others. And again, I'm going to rewrite this in this form, S sub 2 times 1 plus 0 0.06. And again, I want to combine 1 and 0 0.06, so I get S sub 2 times 1.06. Now again, I want to do what I did up here, which is I want to notice that I've got S sub 2 is equal to this expression right here. And I would like to take this expression and substitute it in here for S sub 2. Well, if I do that, then I've, I've got this long expression right here that I'm going to put in here for S sub 2. So now my S sub 2 times 1.06 is going to be S sub 0 times 1.06 times 1.06. That's what S sub 2 is equal to. So I've got S sub 2, then multiply that times 1.06. Now I have an expression for my salary in year 3, and it looks like this. And in fact, let me go ahead and rewrite this one more time. 1.06 times 1.06 times 1.06 is just 1.06 to the power of 3. Now some of you may have already noticed what the pattern is starting to look like here. If I want to calculate my salary in year 3, then all I need to do to calculate my salary for year 3 is take my salary, my starting salary, that is S sub 0, which is $40,000, and multiply that times this value here, 1.06, raised to the power of 3, which is just the number of the year that I want to calculate my salary for. Well, if I keep going, then I'm just going to keep repeating this pattern. And essentially what I'm saying is that I've got a formula now that I can calculate my annual salary in any year. So I'm going to call this, I'm going to write this like this, S sub T. T stands for time. S sub T equals S sub 0 times 1.06 to the power of T. So I can now calculate my salary for any year by taking my initial salary, multiplying it times 1.06 to the power of whatever that year is. So let's take a look at how we would use this formula we just came up with. S sub t equals S sub 0 times 1.06 to the power of t. So example number 2, it says use the salary formula from example number 1 to calculate your salary after 4 years, 12 years, and 40 years. So in other words, it's saying use this formula and calculate the value of S sub 4, S sub 12, and S sub 40. Okay, well let's do that. S sub 4 means I take, now remember S sub 0 in this case equals $40,000. That's my starting salary. So S sub 4 is going to be S sub 0, which is 40,000, times 1.06 to the power of 4, and if I punch that into my calculator, I get $50,499. So that would be my annual salary in year number four. My salary in year number 12. All right, again, I take S sub 0, which is 40,000, times 1.06 to the power of 12. And if I punch that in my calculator, I find that after I work for this company for 12 years, I'll be making $80,487 per year. And if I stick around for 40 years and work for this company for 40 years, then my annual salary is going to be 
40,000 times 1.06 to the power of 40, and that would give me a salary of $411,428 per year. So the standard form of an exponential function, like we just derived here, the standard form of an exponential function looks like this. y equals a times b to the power of t. Sometimes you see this as a times b to the power of x, where a is what we call the initial value. So our initial value in this previous example was $40,000, our starting salary. And b is something called the growth or decay factor. So in our previous example, we had a growth factor because our salary was growing every year. Our growth factor in that case was 1.06. The dependent variable in this standard form here is y, and the independent variable is t, or again, sometimes x. You see it written as a times b to the x sometimes as well. Now, I want to talk about the growth and decay factor versus the growth or decay rate because these are two related things, but they're also, uh, but they're very different and you don't want to confuse them. If B, remember B is the growth or decay factor. If B is greater than one, then B is called a growth factor. Note that the value of B is equal to one plus this value called R, where R is called the growth rate. And again, in our previous example, our growth rate was 6%. That was how much our annual salary was increasing, how much it was increasing every year. So our growth rate was 6%, and in order to get our value for B, we took our growth rate, 6%, in the form of a decimal, 0.06, and we added that to the number 1. That gave us the growth factor that we used in our equation. If B is less than 1, then B is called a decay factor. And in that case, B is going to be equal to 1 minus R, where R is called the decay rate. And we're going to look at an example of this in just a minute. One thing to note, the growth or decay rate must be expressed as a decimal. All right. So keep in mind, we've got two different things that we're talking about here, the growth or decay factor and the growth or decay rate. And they're related either by this equation, b equals 1 plus r if you're talking about a growth factor and a growth rate, or b equals 1 minus r if you're talking about a decay factor and a decay rate. All right, so let's take a look at an example involving decay, exponential decay. So example number three in your notes. In 1980, the population of a city was 67.38 million people and decreasing at a constant annual percent rate of 2.6%. Find a formula for P, the population of the city in millions, in year T, where T equals zero represents the year 1980. Okay, so we're going to be using this standard form of an exponential equation since I know I've got an exponentially decreasing rate. And I already know what the value of A is. A is my initial value. And I'm told in the problem that my initial value is 67.38. That's my initial population in millions. It's decreasing at a constant annual percent rate of 2.6%. Well, notice that for this standard form of an exponential equation, A and B, they're what we call parameters. And remember that the parameters of an equation or the parameters of a function, they tell me everything that I need to know about that function. So once I know the value of A and the value of B, then I can write down what my actual formula is going to be for this particular example. Well, I know what A is. B is going to be my decay rate. Excuse me. It's not going to be my decay rate. B is going to be my decay factor. And notice, I don't know what my decay factor is yet. I do, however, know that my decay rate 
is 2.6%. So if I convert that decay rate into a decimal, 0 0.026, well then I can calculate my decay factor. My decay factor, decay factor, that's going to equal 1 minus 0 0.026. And 1 minus 0 0.026 is 0.974. Now I have my decay factor. My value for B is 0.974. Now I can write down my formula for the population of this town. It's going to be Y equals A times B. 0.974 to the power of t. And in fact, our, uh, into our dependent variable, we were told to use p, so let me go ahead and write this as p equals 67.38 times 0.974 to the power of t. Part b, what does the formula predict the population of the city will be in the year 1980? Well, 1980... 1980, that's year zero in our example. So for year zero, I want to calculate the population in year zero using my formula here. That's going to be 67.38 times 0.974 to the power of zero. Any number to the power of zero is just one, so my population in year zero is going to be 67.38 million people. which is what I expected because I was told that to begin with. That was my initial population. What does the formula predict the population of the city will be in the year 1986? Well, 1986 is year 6, so I'm going to use my formula again. This time, however, I want to calculate the population in year 6. So that's going to be 67.38 times 0.974 to the power of 6. In other words, 6 years after my initial population. Now, notice that since my population is decreasing at a constant rate, I'm going to expect that when I punch this number into my calculator, I should get a number smaller than 67.38 million people because the number of people is decreasing by 2.6% each year. So if I punch that into my calculator, the number I get is 57.53 million people.